question for you, you. Uh, what is your favorite form of testosterone and why is it testosterone cypionate? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, I mean, injectable testosterone is definitely the most common type of testosterone that I'm prescribing. Yeah. And that's usually part of the conversation with pe patients whenever we're talking about, you know, what are our options? Um, so injectables, and I usually do use Cipionate. Um, we'll kind of talk about different esters there. But mostly it's out of convenience and cost. Yeah. Or injections. Yeah. No, I think it's kind of interesting. If you go back and look at the history of testosterone therapy, testosterone was first synthesized back in the 1930s. And uh, depot testosterone, which is injectable testosterone that has an ester attached to it that allows for slow release over time, that was first introduced, I believe, in 1973 with uh, testosterone cypionate. And it's kind of funny. I think that this is the only field in medicine where kind of the gold standard, at least the most widely prescribed prescribed form of testosterone is 50 some odd years old. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, as far as the, you know, the therapy that's being prescribed more than anything else. And I think you hit on something which is important, which is the concept of esters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, whenever we talk about testosterone, you know, people often throw around the term, let's say with estrogens, like, right, like bioidentical estrogen mm. and that sort of thing. I, I think there's a... With testosterone, you hear that for sure too. People will be like... Yeah, bio I want something bio. I want bioidentical hormones. Yeah, right? and the truth is that all testosterone is bioidentical, and the reason is, is that with estrogen, there are several different types of estrogens that have differing chemical structures. And so, many years ago, whenever making uh, prescription estrogen, they would get that from cows or pigs, and obviously, it was less than ideal because the structure of those estrogens was not the same as uh, estrogen that we use, estradiol, for their Therapy in women. So it became popular to use the term bioidentical when mm -hmm. describing estrogen, which makes sense, but for testosterone, it's all bioidentical. Mm -hmm. What's different is what's attached to the testosterone to allow it be delivered and allow it last over time. And so for injectables, that's going to be your ester, which is a chemical structure that is attached to the end of the testosterone that allows it to be slowly metabolized over time. So for testosterone cypionate, the half-life, which means the length of time that it takes to go from one concentration to exactly half that is about eight days or so, mm -hmm. all right? And that compares to testosterone enanthate. You'll find different numbers. It's usually about four to five days, maybe up to seven days has been an estimated half-life for enanthate. Or propionate, which only lasts like two to three days. It's like quick on and quick off. Yeah. And the faster the ester, the shorter the ester, and arguably, you know, the less water retention or fluid retention you might get with it, which I don't know. Do you see a lot of fluid retention in our practice? So, not a ton, but yeah. some. And I'll kind of switch the ester maybe in that situation sometimes yeah. um, to try and, uh, but you know, talking about, you know, half-lives, then that is directly correlated with how often you have to inject. Yep. Right. So yeah. Yeah. the testosterone cypionate, I, I usually have guys inject once a week. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan of, you know, splitting the dose and doing twice weekly dosing too. But yeah. I've had a lot of guys try both, maybe guys who came to me and they were already doing weekly injections. And so we said, let's try doing twice a week. And I've had some guys who liked it a lot and some guys who just went back to once a week. But I tell guys I don't like doing it any less than weekly. Yeah. You know, not every other week and not monthly or anything like that. Ideally, yeah. lower doses more often. And believe it or not, that used to be how a lot of people would prescribe testosterone. They would come, I still see it yeah. a good bit. Yeah. They'll come into the office, get like a single dose of like 400 milligrams <laughs> of testosterone, and that's supposed to last them until, you know, that same date next month, yes. which is crazy yeah. if you look at the half-life. Like mm -hmm. they are in the at the floor in the, you know, basement by the time that they come back. Um, you know, I would say that the, the big thing that we're always trying to balance is like convenience and reality versus like what is the most physiologic and the most ideal. Like in a perfect world, right, we would have like a testosterone pump or something like that that could give you yeah. that morning like bump that you get normally and you'd just have that work automatically, but that's just like not a thing. Yeah. And so instead, you know, we have these injectable esters that are most commonly used. And, you know, obviously the more common you, or the more frequently you dose it, the less likely you're going to have a significant aromatization. So conversion from testosterone to estrogen, and it, you have a decreased incidence of polycythemia or increased red blood cell count where the blood gets too thick and causes problems. But, you know, I think it, it's a rare patient who's 
willing to inject himself every single day, right? I and know. So you got to find that balance. I've had two guys, I think, come to me and they were already on daily dosing. And so we just continued it. But yeah. I, I have never been the one to... Uh, uh, recommend daily dosing. So. Yeah, yeah, I have a handful of patients of mine on uh, daily dosing, and I really like it for guys that are willing to stick with it because you know it offers a lot of consistency, and especially for patients that are at really high risk for polycythemia, like your kidney transplant patients, or you know for patients that have something like polycythemia vera. If that's you know their only option, you know let's say they can't use another form of testosterone, uh, injectable daily uh, cypionate or enanthate is a really good option. Typically, I don't do daily propionate, you know, because it just burns like fire when you inject it, mm -hmm. and it's you know a, it's a different compound. Uh, it does have its uses though, um, and I think it is worth mentioning there does exist testosterone suspension, which is just testosterone with no ester on it that you inject. But I don't think I've seen that outside of the powerlifting you know world where you're trying to get some massive dose of androgen on board before some you know acute stress or need for muscular fiber recruitment not a whole lot of application in you know day-to-day -day clinical practice because it's in and out in a few hours oh right? yeah minutes really you oh, know like okay. an hour or two like yeah. it is quick on and quick off yeah um you know so uh it's interesting it's good to know that it's out there and to mm -hmm. understand the pharmacology of it but doesn't really have a place in the doctor's office for most applications. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, pros with injections, uh, you know, with cost too, yep. it's very reasonably priced, even just paying, you know, cash pay through either retail pharmacies or compounding pharmacies. A lot of times it works out to be like $11 a month or so. Yeah. Um, which it, uh, some patients are surprised by that. They think that injections are going to be a more expensive option. Yeah. Um, Cons, you, you know, it's needles. And so I've had some people who pass out in the office just talking about needles. Maybe that's not a great option for them. Yeah. Um, but other, you know, most people do well with injections. And there's different ways to do the injection, too. I mean, classically, mm. testosterone being intramuscular, um, you can inject sub Q, subcutaneous yep. as well. So usually just using different needles to do that. Um, and potentially, you know, doing a lower dose again more often if you're doing sub Q versus you don't want to inject like one cc sub, sub q. q or anything yeah, yeah yeah what's your volume limit for a sub q usually 0. 0.5 yeah and if yeah. i go above that then splitting it and doing 0.3 twice a week or something yeah. like that i think i've uh, met more than one guy who tried to do more than 0.5 even sometimes at 0.5 subcutaneously and they'll end up with like, these little nodules that mm -hmm. just take a long time to go away so I think sub Q is a great option for people that are doing microdosing smaller amounts and more frequently. Um, but you know, for guys that are doing, you know, 0.75, like that's just, that's too much oil to put in the sub Q space. Yeah. Talking yeah. about oil. Yeah. Uh, so testosterone is also, you can get it in different oils. I mean, yes. to start testosterone is oil based. So whenever you're injecting it or you're drawing it up out of the vial, you'll notice that it's a thicker substance. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a small needle, it's going to be more difficult to draw it up. Um, so, sometimes you'll use a draw needle and then switching that out for your injection needle. Um, but there's different types of oils that yeah. you can use too. So yeah. talk through that a little. Well, you know, the most common uh, in commercial pharmacies, so CVS and Walgreens is typically going to be cottonseed oil. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but it's and really, it's just cost effective. Um, when you're talking about you know, my preference, I really like grapeseed oil. Okay. Uh, just because it tends to be a little bit less reactive and less irritating to patients. And so that is, you know, commonly a reason to kind of direct patients towards uh, compounded sources because they have more flexibility when it comes to the oil that it's delivered in. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there are, are other oils, you know, besides that, but those tend to be a little bit more niche and a little bit harder to get a hold of. But, you know, you'll see uh, all kinds of, you know, uh, strange oils being used, for example, and like Mexican testosterone, and they'll have different concentrations. Here in the U.S., it's 200 mg per mil. It's pretty much the industry standard. Um, but over in other countries, you'll notice 250 milligrams per milliliter. So it's something just to keep in mind if you are a patient Patient that's using injectable testosterone and let's say you get some redness or irritation I think a lot of patients are worried about injection site infection when you know a real possibility is actually maybe you just don't react well to that oil and we need to think of getting you something that's a little bit more um, uh, a little bit easier on your system yeah yeah and I've had that sometimes with guys doing sub Q injections that they'll get kind of like redness or irritation or like itching yeah. and then 
your options there. I've had some guys just switch to IM and then they were totally fine yep. versus switching the oil is another option if they want to stick with sub Q. Sure. Um, and one last thing, I think it's kind of uh, helpful to mention, like there are a lot of different needles that you can use to administer testosterone. Um, I will tell you that for the majority of patients, myself included, you know, I like a 23 gauge, you know, one inch or one and a half inch needle. And that's because I'm just a masochist and it doesn't really bother me to have that larger bore because the cha the challenge is, is that whenever you start going to like 25s or 27s, um, yes, it doesn't, you know, doesn't poke nearly as much whenever you're administering it, but it takes for ever to draw up that oil. I feel like I hear the Jeopardy, like, you know, a jingle in my head every time I'm trying to draw it up yeah. with a smaller needle. Oh yeah. yeah. If I'm doing a 27 for sub Q injections, I give them an 18 yeah. or 23 yeah. something else. And uh, also, but yeah, oh, I have to keep in mind if you do the, the, the swap in between 18 and mm -hmm. like a smaller one, they are going to lose a little bit of oil on that needle. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Some yeah. waste. And uh, you know, there's ways around that to try to like draw it up and then uh, pull it back you know, pull and it then back. Yeah. Or yeah, you yeah. just factor in, you have some waste, you know, there 